Okay, so, so we discussed how McDonald has allowed us to diagnose multiple sclerosis earlier and earlier while maintaining very good specificity, sensitivity, and accuracy. And that was only important because we can treat earlier and earlier. The question is, what's the value? How early should we start? And, and what, what are the data that support that, Pat? When you have an organ-specific immune-mediated disease, there's ongoing permanent damage that's accumulating. So it would seem very logical to hit that early to minimize that ongoing permanent damage. You have very good data from rheumatoid arthritis that within three to six months of onset, you need to start rheumatologic therapy or you will have joint and bone damage, permanent damage several years later. And when you look at the studies of MS, Virtually every single study has shown an early treatment group does better than a delayed treatment group. In the uh, big data MS registry that was presented uh, at Ectrams in Berlin, they screened close to 150,000 patients. They looked at about 12,000 uh, MS individuals, CIS, and they had more than 10-year follow-up, and they looked at uh, six-month epochs of treatment with a disease-modifying therapy from the time of CIS out through five years, and they looked at what had impact on a decreasing confirmed 12-month disability. The only statistically significant impact was starting the DMT within six months of the clinically isolated syndrome. And we have a recent MS-based registry of 1,555 um, MS individuals where, again, they looked at conversion from relapsing to secondary progressive MS. So if you were on a DMT, significantly less development of secondary progressive MS. If you were starting on the DMT early as opposed to late, significantly lower proportion going on to secondary progressive MS. And then if you were started on what was viewed as a high efficacy uh, disease modifying therapy, you had significantly less transition to secondary progressive MS. So there's very, very strong data saying early treatment may, may be a key component, and I'm gonna say early is within six months of the clinically isolated syndrome, the MS individual should be on a disease-modifying therapy. Or sooner? Well, that's an interesting question. You mean treating at the level of radiologically isolated syndrome? No, not yet, no, but you said within six months. Yes. Why not at immediately? Yes, yes, oh. ideally, yes, yes. Okay. So, so Tom described the criteria for which he would start someone with a clinically isolated syndrome, a typical isolated syndrome, and two lesions that are typical of MS on the MRI. You treat CIS? Yes. I know you do, yes? Absolutely. As do we, but I've been surprised that there's a, still a degree of resistance to this in Europe. And I don't quite understand it because we have seven studies now using the criteria that you described, a typical CIS and two or more lesions on the MRI, and they've all shown what you're quoting there, that the, that the individuals started at that time are less likely to go on to another attack and other metrics of worsening than if they waited. And so I'm not sure I understand why. Now, the, the issue is, of course, that we're still talking about typical CIS. And, and, I, and I don't know, do you have a sense how it is in the community or seeing many people who are untreated CISs? I don't think the, the community yet has the sense of urgency of treating early. If you're just thinking about CNS reserve and you think about MS assaulting CNS reserve, you would want to start treatment as quickly as possible. And I think that's a message that we need to really get out to the community very strongly. So to answer your question, Fred, I think the community still is reluctant to some degree, not universally. I mean, I saw somebody in the last couple of weeks who has not been on therapy. CIS clearly would have been somebody I would have suggested right up front. But their doctor said, we'll just wait. We'll continue to monitor you and see how things are going on. So the data is there to say treating CIS is key. But still, there's some reluctance. Thoughts? I, I think in general uh, that uh, even in sort of the community, I'm seeing that people are treating uh, CIS. But I'm sure that it really varies. 
I think one of the very helpful things, which is an outgrowth of the optic neuritis treatment trial from the, the 90s, is that almost every ophthalmologist now knows to send a patient with optic neuritis for an MRI. And presumably with the result of that MRI to a neurologist. And I think that that's been very useful. Um, I think with the partial myelinities, it gets a little more uh, complicated because very often, sadly, they're confused for peripheral neuropathies um, when clearly someone who rises up to here, you know, is, is not a peripheral neuropathy. But, uh, uh, and the same thing with brainstem cerebellar, sometimes not recognized in the same way. So it turns out I think that the optic neuritises are the ones that are best recognized and, and sent to us. I do think that, and that, to come back to Pat's point, obviously, uh, regarding early start, I do think that we know from even the early uh, clinically isolated syndrome trials, or the older medications, the ones that we have had for a long period of time, particularly the agents that have been studied in CIS, in relapsing remitting disease, and then perhaps also were studied in more advanced patients, secondary progressive patients, we see a clear decrement of the effectiveness or, or the relative reduction of events in this. And we have also seen in the CIS trials, particularly the more recent ones, an attenuation of McDonald MS, 2010-2005 McDonald MS. So this concept there is a wind, that there is a window of opportunity, I think, is certainly one that is important to consider. This is a very good point because the, the, the magnitude of effect was greatest in the CIS patients, more so than the relapse remaining, and certainly more so than any of the progressives.